Jesus, please take us from this grandstand world. It's time we got into the game. Welcome to episode two of Leaving the Grandstand World. Let's remember that we want to leave the world in which we rely solely on fate to guide our days and join the spiritual troops in the playing field where with the Holy Spirit as our guide, our light erases the darkness. It's good to keep this in the back of your mind as you listen to these podcasts. Although Easter has come and gone this year, I didn't want to wait until next year to share these very special pieces. All of the creative sharings today explore what Jesus did on Easter for us. He rose. He was dead, but to the surprise of all the disciples, he was no longer in the tomb. Have you been in the tomb in a figurative sense lately? Did you know that Jesus Christ will take your hand and lead you out of whatever type of death you might be experiencing? That is what He does best. He leads into a life of abundance. The original song I'm sharing today is Let's Ring the Bells for Jesus Christ. It is based on a true story I read in a strange but true book many years ago. After my wife died when I was living in Idaho, I went into a recording studio and laid down guitar and vocal tracks of selected songs, of which this was one, then later sent them off to Dean Kalin in Salt Lake City, Utah, where he added additional instruments and harmonies. He actually enlisted the help of an adult choir to sing along with the chorus at the end. This song tells what happened when a town under siege by Napoleon chooses to ring the church bells on Easter. Enjoy it. Happened in a mountain town 200 years ago. Napoleon had gathered troops so ominous below. This town was needed for his troops, and it was quite a prize. On Easter morn, he'd take this town before they realized. The council met to talk about. The town's impending doom Everyone was nervous in that tiny council room Surrender to Napoleon Or fight and hide the young A preacher stood and said Let's do what we have never done Let's ring the bells for Jesus Christ Let's ring them loud and clear Let's ring the bells courageously Let's ring away all fear Let's ring the bells for Jesus Christ This lovely Easter morn Let's ring the bells with all our might So we might be reborn That Easter morn the sky was filled With bells that rang and rang that Easter morn the preacher led the people as they sang And then that army turned and fled because the bells had rung They thought an army larger than their own had finally come Let's ring the bells for Jesus Christ, let's ring them loud and clear Let's ring the bells courageously, let's Ring away all fear Let's ring the bells for Jesus Christ This lovely Easter morn Let's ring the bells with all our might So we might be reborn Let's ring the bells for Jesus Christ Let's ring them loud and clear Let's ring the bells courageously Let's 
Let's ring away our fear. Let's ring the bells for Jesus Christ this lovely Easter morn. Let's ring the bells with all our might so we might be reborn. Let's ring the bells for Jesus Christ. Let's ring them loud and clear. Let's ring the bells courageously. Let's ring away all fear. Let's ring the bells for Jesus Christ this lovely Easter morn. Let's ring the bells with all our So when we choose to look beyond appearances and figuratively ring the bells for Jesus Christ, miraculous things will happen. Jesus will remove the pall of death and inject life into your circumstance, no matter what it is. Next, I want to share a very special poem entitled, He is Risen. For a year, we lived in an RV in the driveway of Eva's mom's home, caring for her as she experienced Alzheimer's. I set up a makeshift recording studio in her basement and found instrumentals that were appropriate with my poetry and recorded them together. One of the poems was, He is Risen. And as I recorded it, a wave of emotion washed over me, and the tears would not stop. You'll be able to detect those tears as the tone of my voice reflects them. The instrumental was by a group called Emissary, and the title of it was 2012, which, oddly enough, was the year I recorded this. I've never been able to find this group or that instrumental on the internet again. Please enjoy He is Risen. He is risen. It's over. It's done. Though traffic speeds by my window, I can see the lifeless body, as lifeless as a million ancestors of mine. Though birds chatter life out my window, I can see the body in state, lying there, so still, so very still. A jet almost breaks my somber vision with its thunderous roar. I see his hand twitch. I see his eyelids squeeze tight, then flash open, revealing so much love, so much compassion for the people who killed him. Then, as a long freight train rumbles by in the distance, clickety-clack, clickety-clack, I wonder at his power, at his life, at his wisdom, that though many years have passed and shops are clothed in concrete and glass instead of tents, and streets are asphalt instead of dirt, and transportation is metallic instead of animal, And we are all so sophisticated now. A man 
in his funeral attire sat up. Destroy this temple and took some deep breaths, each breath a praise to the Father within. And I will and angels rolled a giant rock away for him. In three days, and he stepped out into the morning air, praising the life in his body. Raise it again. It's over. It's done. God's Son rose that awesome day. For each of us, He is the way. These next two short pieces come from my book, A Holy Hodgepodge, in which I gathered a bunch of various writings from my personal archive of writings not in other books. In each of the true stories, the Holy Spirit shows up to inject life into a dismal situation. Notice that and celebrate your freedom from your dismal circumstances. Enjoy these stories. Here is the pedestrian overpass. I tried to remain solemn. That was my mood as I started off on a Saturday afternoon walk and I had no desire to change it. As I sauntered toward the campus of a local community college, the thin cloud cover and the freezing temperatures reflected my mental attitude. I was deep in thought about small things, little aches and pains, little irritants that were sandpapering the edges of my life. Two children, laughing, ran past me. That was rude of them. They had no business interrupting my solemnity. I slowed down so they could hurry past. Walking on, breathing deeply the fresh, crisp air, I was halfway through the campus then, reflecting about my life. Soon I came to a major thoroughfare on the other side of the campus, and I decided to go north on it. There was a junior high school nearby and a pedestrian overpass just ahead. I decided it would be somewhat interesting to climb that pedestrian overpass and observe the traffic. Above it all, I could watch the cars go under me, each one a shell, holding a driver and maybe passengers, all living their separate lives, all going to their separate places, all doing their separate things. I could get even more contemplative and withdrawn, which was attractive to me at that moment. I climbed the walkway, circling around higher and higher, then walked out over the street. Traffic roared under me, and I was sure that people in those cars and trucks were completely unconcerned with my observation of them. So what if some clown was up on the pedestrian overpass watching them? What difference would it make to them? What interest could they possibly have in me? As I watched the traffic flow under me, I began to stare indifferently into the private worlds of the people's vehicles. But then, completely unexpectedly, one person waved to me. It caught me off guard. It made me take a quick breath. What was happening? Then, in another car, two more people waved at me. Suddenly, most of the people in the cars into which I was staring began waving and smiling. I was shocked at first. This wasn't supposed to happen. This wasn't part of my plan. 
I had determined that I was going to have a solemn, isolated moment on this cold afternoon on the pedestrian overpass. But, as if by magic, I was catapulted into a different state of mind. It was a conspiracy, I'm positive. My sense of solemnity flew away. Any sense of separation I was feeling dropped from the overpass and dissipated onto the street below. I, I could sense a meltdown. Something welled up within me that was making me feel, well, joyous. I waved at those who waved at me, and other people in cars and trucks going under the overpass responded. I had been singled out and zapped by a wave of love from random drivers and passengers on the street below this pedestrian overpass. There was nothing I could do to stop their assault. I was defeated in my attempt to remain introspective. My battle was lost. I smiled and laughed and waved at the parade of humanity, who may not have even known the depth in which they had touched me in their travels that day. And next you'll hear, Was it just a fluke? The traffic could be heard speeding by on a major thoroughfare below at day's end as we ate our birthday celebration meals out on the patio of my brother-in-law's house. I tried to become genuinely interested in the people there, but on this day it wasn't easy. Fully half of the people attending were strangers to me. Many were teens or children. Suddenly, one of the participants told a joke that garnered a few laughs. My mind searched for a humorous comment that could be attached to it, and I thought of something that would have been fun to say, but by then the joke was over and conversation had moved to other areas. Sitting out on the patio as the sun was setting, surrounded by the festive chatting and the traffic noises, I became withdrawn. I closed like a sea anemone. As I made the decision to close, I became aware that I didn't really want to do that. My wife was sitting beside me. Two teens were seated quietly in front of me, and a third teen was at the barbecue turning over some meat for her sandwich. Many adults were also sitting around. Everyone was in his own world. I was in mine. I concentrated on my plate of food in front of me. It was not asking me to participate in any conversations. It just stared back at me and looked and tasted good. That was the kind of relationship I could appreciate for the moment. But still, an uneasiness prevailed. I didn't really want to be so into the food and so out of the relationships with other people. I decided to say a prayer. Quietly, I asked the Holy Spirit to come into my heart and help me not be so withdrawn. Was it a fluke? What happened next was surprising and an observable scientific experience to my mind. The second the prayer was finished, the young girl at the grill turned to me and said, Hi, Vic, even though she had already said that earlier. I responded joyfully with, Hi, are you about ready to chow down? The teens in front of me began to talk about computers and the Internet, and I had a few comments and questions to ask them. In an instant, the Holy Spirit appeared to have blessed the moment with animation and life. Relationships that could have remained dead sprang forth like flowers with fresh scents and new colorful blossoms. Perhaps the most incredible thing was the joke that was told earlier came up in conversation again. That just doesn't happen too often. And, amazingly quick to others, I shot out with the humorous addition that I had thought of earlier. It brought the house down. 
The key to this whole thing was becoming the observer. I observed that I was in a state of mind that I didn't want to be in. I was feeling isolated and separate from my fellow passengers on this party ship I was sailing. As the observer, I could choose differently. When I did, the Holy Spirit responded instantly. I was no longer a victim of my isolated feelings, but the conqueror of them. I was no longer focused on myself, but in an instant was focused on God's children who surrounded me. And the children of God who surrounded me responded instantly to my prayer. Something in them reached out to the something in me. I wanted to love them. Deep inside them, they wanted to love me. With my prayer, Holy Spirit allowed our wish to come true. Let's Ring the Bells for Jesus Christ is available for free at godlychristianmusic.com. Many of our other songs are there as well. The poetry is available at Amazon as a paperback entitled God is a Poem. To get it with the instrumental, go to audible.com. Your first audiobook is always free there. God bless until next time. Remember to pack your bags and leave the grandstand world. Jesus, please take us from this grandstand world It's time we got into the game We're so tired of this grandstand world Where feelings never seem to change Sometimes this world seems so unjust I think we'll find, I hope we'll find That through your mind the sidelines aren't for us